Hey guys, uh, another review impressions video. I've been doing a lot of these lately. I'm finishing a lot of games, uh, and this one was a short one. Uh, new release, uh, Bayonetta 2, uh, one of my most anticipated titles uh, for 2014, for sure. Um, I'm a huge fan of the first game, and, um, you know, with character action games, um, I, I used to be really into the this kind of game. Uh, Ninja Gaiden on the original Xbox, uh, and like Ninja Gaiden Black, I loved that game. I still do. I still think that's one of my like favorite games of all time. Um, but and I had played a lot of Devil May Cry uh, back uh, back in the day. Um, I, I've completed all the Devil May Cry games except for the new one, the Ninja Theory one, which I'm not really interested in. Uh, but I've kind of grown out of them. I well, I, I don't want to say grown out of them. I just they're not as compelling as they used to be for me. Um, like, fairly, not, well, I guess not too recently, but, like, a year ago or so, I tried playing, like, God of War on the PS3, and I hated that game, like, I could not stand it, uh, and I've, tr I've tried a few, a few games, like, Enslaved's kind of, Enslaved Odyssey of the West kind of has, like, a character action-ish battle system to it, it's very simplistic, but I couldn't really get into that game all that much, and a lot of them just haven't interested me, like, the new Devil May Cry, uh, the Ninja Theory one, Heavenly Sword, like not, not, a lot of those games, uh, got the new God of War, Ascension or whatever it's called. Like these character action games, they just there's something about them that just I just don't really want to play them. Uh, they all kind of feel the same to me, I guess. Um, but Bayonetta is probably tied with Ninja Gaiden Black as my favorite, uh, and that's because the gameplay in that game was fucking amazing. Like there's so much hidden depth to it. And you can't just button mash your way to victory. Uh, and the, the witch time mechanic in that game, I thought, was a breath of fresh air and it really made the battles fun. And then, of course, you had the over-the-top bosses and, and just the, the absolute craziness of that game, I, I think, uh, pulled me in. And then it had some exploration to it. It had some, like, like sh uh, you know, it wasn't just linear levels. Um, the, the one of the reasons why I like Ninja Gaiden Black so much is because there's a lot of explore, exploration to that game. Um, there's like a city in that game where you kind of like, you unlock like shortcuts throughout that city. It was really cool. Like, I, I wish, like Ninja Gaiden 2 I still liked, but I really was disappointed with how linear that one was. Um, but yeah, enough of those games. Uh, Bayonetta 2. Um, uh, so yeah, uh, I loved this game. I mean, there's... I, I don't think that was going to be... A, like, I, I wasn't expecting to be disappointed with this game. I mean, I I don't know how they could possibly screw it screw it up. Um, I will say, it's maybe a bit overhyped. I, I, if you look at all the reviews, which, again, I've said before, I'm not... I don't care about reviews too much, but uh, this game is getting 9s and 10s everywhere. Like, people are losing their shit over this game. Uh, and I don't like it that much. Um, I'll, I'll go into that later, I guess, why I don't think this is, like, the greatest game ever. Um, but it, it's definitely a hell of a fun game, and uh, definitely a worthy purchase on the Wii U. Um, I've been playing a lot of Wii U lately, it's crazy. Um, but uh, this actually does come with Bayonetta 1, a port of Bayonetta 1 on a separate disc. That is awesome. That makes this worth buying, especially if you haven't played the original Bayonetta. If you haven't played the original Bayonetta, unless you just don't like character action games, like, this is just uh, a great value. Uh, you're getting two fantastic games um, here. Uh, so I guess I'll, I'll start off with the story. I, I'm not going to talk too much because about the story because I don't want to spoil the story of the first game uh, for those that haven't played it. Uh, I will say, I, I've talked before about the, the first Bayonetta and how I didn't really like the story in that game. Um, and it's the same with this game, though I do actually like the story in this a bit better. Uh, Bayonetta, I, I like the, the character, Bayonetta, I like her her personality and just, you know, it's, a lot of people talk about, of course, like, uh, the sexualization of this game, and I don't, I don't know, I, 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 I think that's a bit, it's, that's a bit crazy, uh, I don't, like, there's a bit of it in here, but, I mean, that's just a part of the character, that's who she is, um, maybe it, it gets a bit weird with, like, some of the camera uh, what like the camera focusing in on her ass and whatever, but I I don't I don't know that like that's kind of stuff just doesn't bother me in games all that all that much and it doesn't bother me here. In fact, I'd say the first game gets a bit more carried away with that more so than this one. Um, but uh, the story I I'm not even gonna say much about the story other than like I, honestly I'm not even gonna really talk about it. This there's really not 
like it's a very over the top storyline. Uh, it's it's borderline incoherent. Not as much. Not as it's not as bad as the first game. I was really confused throughout the first game. I, uh, but this game, not as much. Um, I mean, there's so much crazy shit in this game, and the story provides a good reason for why you're doing all this crazy shit. And I do love the character uh, of Bayonetta. It's some of the other characters in this game I'm not a fan of. Um, there's a there's like the returning characters from the first game I like, but there's a new character in here, a child character um, by the name of Loki, which I, I fucking hated him. I thought he was awful. Uh, he really kind of like he brought the story down in my opinion. Um, but I, I don't know. I I, I I gotta say there was times where I was tempted to skip cutscenes in this game. They go on a bit too long, I think. Uh, at times, uh, some of some of the, the humor in this, I, I don't think quite works all that well. Um, I mean, I don't know. The story, it's just, it's just not my type of, not really my kind of story. Um, but it's really the gameplay in this game that's that's gonna keep you playing. And I think some people might enjoy like the over top, the over the top nature of the story in this game. Um, but I. I, I guess, you know, I did enjoy it a bit more than the first one, though it's it's still definitely, in my opinion, the weakest aspect of these games. Um, but uh, the gameplay, though, that's that's where this game shines, as as with most uh, games from uh, Platinum Games. Um, you know, it's it's it generally kind of feels more of the same uh, if you've played Bayonetta 1. It's got the same combat system, though there are a few differences. Um, being a character action game... Uh, the it's it's the game you play you play it uh, in chapters uh, there's 16 chapters a 10 hour long game this is not a long game by any means at least on the normal difficulty which is what uh, I played on I should have played hard mode actually uh, because um, this game was a lot easier than the first Bayonetta for me uh, I played the first Bayonetta on the normal mode and I died quite a bit uh, it was a pretty challenging game uh, and I tried hard mode on the original Bayonetta, and it just kicked my ass. Like, I, I pretty much couldn't even do it. Um, this game, though, normal mode, I died maybe once or twice throughout the entire game. Like, it's... I, I should have probably put, uh, put it on the hard mode. I think that would have been more appropriate. Uh, so I do recommend, if you're going to play this, put it on hard mode. I, I don't think people will really struggle with that too much. Um, but you're going by uh, chapter, chapter by chapter... Um, there's some exploration, like some levels are a bit open where you can kind of explore off the beaten path uh, and kind of find like hidden, hidden like portals to do like bonus challenges. Um, and then you can find like hidden LPs that you can uh, turn in for new weapons at a shop. Um, so I liked all that. I love the exploration. Same with the first Bayonetta. Uh, but there are some levels where it's just like a straight point A to point B and they're, they're very linear. Uh, there's a lot of boss battles in this game, like with Bayonetta 1. Uh, uh, like, some levels will have, like, upwards of, like, three or four boss battles in just one chapter. It, it's pretty crazy. Uh, and it just gets more insane the further you get into it. Uh, this is There's definitely a lot of spectacle to this game. Uh, but the combat, I mean, is generally the same, where you have different weapons. Uh, one of the new things with this game is, like, you have weapons on your hands and feet. Uh, you can put different weapons on your hands and feet, so you... I, I liked the customization there, where you're finding new weapons and you're, you're experimenting with them. Each new weapon gives you a, a shit ton of combos for you to use a, a, and memorize. Um, so I, I liked that change. That was pretty cool. Uh, one cool thing, like you get like these, these chainsaw weapons. If you put them on your feet, you like s figure skate almost around the the levels. I thought that was a that was an interesting touch. Um, so yeah, the combat is very fast, very fluid. This game runs at 60 frames per second. Uh, hardly any flame frame rate drops. Uh, it, it's like I mean the main mechanic from the first game and what makes this the combat in this to me so fun is the witch time mechanic where as soon as an enemy is about to attack you you dodge. Uh, I think it's the R R button uh, on the Wii U Pro controller. Uh, and if you dodge just at the right time, uh, if you dodge early, you'll get a bit of witch time where it will go into slow motion. You can get some extra hits on the enemy and you dodge the attack. Uh, if you do it just at the last second, you get more witch time and you can really uh, lay into the enemies. Uh, you have like a magic meter you can use as well where uh, this is a new part of the game, uh, the Umbren Climax mode, uh, where if you have like a full magic meter, you can press jeez, I already don't remember what it was. Um, I think it was 
L. Yeah, I think it was L. If you press L, you go into like a super powered mode where you do like tons of damage. You're faster, and your health I think even regenerates a bit. Um, so there's there's some strategy there. Uh, but the main thing though is you know studying your your enemies and, and knowing when they're going to attack, uh, studying their attack patterns and dodging uh, flawlessly and dodging attacks. Um, I much prefer this over a combat system where you just block or there is no kind of defensive option. Um, now, like, it's one of those things where I can't really, it's, you have to really have the controller in your hands and start playing around with this combat uh, to really get a feel for it and why it's just so much fun. Um, and other people, I, I think, are, like, I'm not great at this game. I'm, I'm, I, I, like, I, I find it hard to memorize a lot of combos, but it's there. Uh, you can also, you can generally button mash on the lower difficulties, as long as you're good with the witch time. Um, you can get different accessories to it at the shop, which will give you, like, new abilities. You can buy moves uh, in the shop with, like, halos that you get throughout the levels. Uh, you can buy healing items. You can, like, mix uh, materials you get throughout the levels and make your own healing items. Um, uh, you, it, this game works like a lot of platinum games, too, where you get... Um, like, I talked about this in Wonderful 101, uh, where each, each time you're fighting enemies, you can get, like, a score... Uh, depending on how much damage you take, your highest combo, and things like that. Uh, and you'll get medals, like uh, pure platinum, all the way down to like stone metal. Uh, and they kind of tally those up, and then every time you complete a chapter, it gives you like a total rank or whatever. So there's a lot of challenge there. Uh, if you wanted to 100% this game, just like Wonderful 101, it would be very tough to do, I would think. Uh, and I am going to replay this game. This is definitely a replayable game. Uh, there's tons of different costumes to unlock, and it's very... Like, getting everything in this game is very expensive, that it's going to take quite a few playthroughs. Um, and I'm going to start on hard mode soon, because I, I didn't unlock any other difficulty levels beating normal mode. I think I had to play through the hard mode, uh, so I am going to do that. I mean, the game's short enough. Um, I One big thing with uh, comparing this with Bayonetta 1 is the pacing. I thought this game just flowed much better. Uh, I was playing, like, six or seven missions at a time, whereas in Bayonetta 1... I could only do one or two missions. I found that game kind of wore me out uh, very quickly. Uh, this one, I just kept wanting to play. Like, I was super into it. Um, just to see what kind of crazy shit they'd throw at you next. Um, so, yeah, uh, I think that's about it with the gameplay. Uh, the torture attacks from the first one are back in, uh, where you kind of, when you have your magic meter, you can, like, press X and A at the same time uh, in, at an enemy, and then you can, like, do, like, a quick time event type thing where... Yeah, like these over over the top torture attacks, like putting enemies in a vice, or, or like an Iron Maiden, and all, all sorts of crazy torture attacks like that. Um, but there's even like a new character you can unlock in this that you don't have to play as Bayonetta. I don't want to spoil that. Um, there's just there's so much unlockable stuff. There's like there's so much content in here. Uh, there's also a multiplayer mode, like an online mode, which I only tried out briefly. It actually seems pretty cool. I, I want to put it more hours into it. Uh, it's like a co-op mode where You've got, like, geez, there's, like, almost 40 different levels you can choose where you're just fighting enemies, uh, random assortments of enemies with a, with a partner, and you kind of you can kind of bet uh, halos where if you succeed, you'll get, like, a bunch of halos back uh, to use to, you know, buy items in the shop and costumes and things like that. Uh, and you're also competing for score as well. Uh, I, I tried that briefly, and it worked really well. Uh, there was no lag or anything like that. Um, so that seems like something that would keep me coming back to it, and I'm sure a lot of people might uh, get into that. It's a lot better than I would expect uh, it to be. Um, but yeah, the gameplay-wise, I mean, there's not much to complain about here. Uh, I will say the final boss is a bit underwhelming. Uh, when I was fighting the final boss, I didn't even know I was fighting the final boss. I didn't even know I was playing the last chapter. Uh, like, Bayonetta 1 had a really epic final boss. This one... I don't know, it, it's it's pretty underwhelming. Uh, it's fun, it's a fun boss, but um, yeah, definitely uh, a tad underwhelming compared to Bayonetta 1. Uh, the good thing, though, is this game doesn't get bogged down with a terrible... Well, I, I wouldn't say it was terrible. Bayonetta 1 had a really awful like Space Harrier-type section that went on forever. Uh, this game doesn't have any of that shit. Uh, well, there's there's a couple parts that are quite different, uh, where it's not standard beat-em-up stuff. Uh, but... That 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 stuff that stuff's kind of fun. Like there's a lot there's a good amount of variety to this between the exploration, the combat, um, and and some of the crazy stuff you can do. Like it's not just fighting uh, nonstop in this game. Um, 
So yeah, I mean, as far as gameplay goes, I, I as far it, like action games don't get much better than this really. Uh, it's super fun to play. Uh, visually, it's a gorgeous game. I love I love like the architecture in this game. Like the the environments you visit are really stunning to look at and very varied. You have like underwater areas, like uh, like real life inspired architecture in, in towns. Uh, you have like uh, there's like a snow area like. I, I don't want to s spoil some of the areas, but there's one particular chapter which is very cool, I have a very cool environment. Um, but yeah, uh, like I said before, runs at 60 frames per second, super smooth. Uh, you know, it's it might be the best looking Wii U game. Uh, I I said Super Mario 3D World was, but uh, this gives that a run for its money. Um, audio wise, voice acting. Uh, like I said before, the Loki character that I hated, the kid character, the voice actor, I, I didn't think did an incredibly great job on that. Otherwise, the voice acting is all good and, and humorous and uh, doesn't take itself too seriously. Uh, the music is fantastic, though. Uh, like with Bayonetta 1, just you really have to hear this soundtrack. It, it's, it's quite different. Uh, you have some jazzy tracks. You have some, like, J-pop type tracks, uh, some rock metal tracks. It's it's all over the place, but it perfectly fits this game. Uh, it, it completely fits the, 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 the this game, uh, for sure. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess that about covers it. Uh, it's, you know, I really say, I would really say it's a must-have for the Wii U, unless you just don't like this type of game. Um, I mean, you know, it's, it's one of those things where maybe I wish it was a bit longer, um, and I do think, um, in terms of, like I, I, like I said before, the, the final boss is kind of underwhelming. And I didn't, as much as I love this game, I, I, I don't think I, I'm not as high on it as some, as like all these people that are giving it 9s and 10s. I think a big part of that, though, is just the story. Uh, I just plain don't like the story in these games. Um, even though I do like the character, uh, I just, I just really cannot stand the story. And... If, I mean, if the story was amazing in this game, if it was something like I was totally into and captivated by, uh, this might be a game that I'd say is like a 9 or a 10 out, of, uh, 10 out of 10. You know, I don't really give scores. If I was to give a score, like an 8 or 8.5 probably, it, it's, it's a great game. Um, whether it's better than the first one, I'd say, I'd say I like it slightly better. Uh, Bayonetta, yeah, it, I think it's a slightly better game than Bayonetta 1. Um, they're both fantastic games, though, and like I said before, the fact that it's the fact that you get uh, both both on here is is amazing. I, like I wish more developers would do that, or publishers, and uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I've gone on too long now. Uh, Bayonetta two, great game. Uh, certainly will most likely make my game of the year list. We'll have to see though. Um, but yeah, that's it, guys. I want to thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.